Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. Today we're going to talk about breakups, what you must do and what you mustn't do. Ooh, we're going to have some fun with this. Before I jump into all of that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day and why you might want to watch and find out more information. My name is Barry Selby. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm an inspirational speaker when my throat isn't clogged up. I am also a relationship and relationship Try again, a relationship and love expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm the author of the best selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. <coughs> Excuse me, try that again. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's what informs my work with women, also what inspired these talks over two years ago. Excuse me, almost three years ago now, I'm losing track, called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Hearts. So today we're episode number 842. And the topic today is about breakups. And in particular, after the breakup, what do you do that is helpful? And what do you do that you don't want to do? <laughs> it makes any sense. And I need to get some props out right up front with three friends of mine um, who I know through a different group, uh, to Heidi, to Tina, and to Nancy, who've been talking about this recently and really today actually, which is what inspired me to do this talk today. So thank you to, thank you ladies for that inspiration. And um, hope this, hope this helps add to the conversation. So I want to take this a little bit deeper from the get-go. <coughs> Excuse me. This, by the way, I've been realizing as I was talking about it earlier, not only applies to relationships, but also sometimes also, also applies to other breakups, like if you got fired from a job. So yes, this is primarily focused about relationship-centric conversation. You've had a bad breakup, you're wounded, you feel hurt and upset, or you have been for a while. But it also can apply to a job that you lost that you loved. That can also apply because the same, some of the same mechanics and the same experiences and same emotions happen both ways. So let's talk about relationship first. And if I find a need to do a sidebar about business, I will do that as well. Simply put, we all go through breakups. Like, duh. Well, unless you never date, but, that's <laughs> but most people I know have gone through relationships once or twice. And sometimes the breakup is because you chose to break up but oftentimes it's because the other person did. Um, I have a whole story about that I may say for later. We'll see if it comes up. And I've been through enough breakups myself and also been fired from some jobs, so I know there's some parallels in here, that there's going to be a certain period of pain and wounding after the breakup. It's very, it's very interesting. If you can walk free of a relationship with no emotional energy and upset after a breakup where you were broken up with, you may not have been fully invested because, well... Mm, not going to go with it yet. So after a breakup, emotional upset, emotional pain, emotional wounding. Let me start with the things you shouldn't do or recommend you don't do because they won't help. First of all, what you don't do is just go and date somebody else right away. And enough people I know do this that it's become almost like a paradigm that I would wish would stop happening. Going out with somebody else right away, especially if you're carrying wounds from past relationships, will do one of two or maybe three things. First thing it's going to do is distract you from the pain and wounds you're facing, which is probably one reason why you might have done it. Because that idea of going out with somebody else is like, I don't want to face that, I want to go away from that, I want to go and just be free. Not so fast. What you're simply doing is you're going to suppress your ability to be emotionally available. Because what you've got is a bunch of emotions tied up in the pain from the past that you can't be free to express for your new partner. So you're not fully expressing. The second thing is that um, emotional suppression is like a ticking time bomb. Yes, I'm doing dramatically for a reason. And in your next relationship, you might find yourself um, blowing up in front of them. Not pretty. In fact, oftentimes, if you're carrying around past wounds and upset and, and hurt feelings, you may be hoping, on, and fingers crossed, like secretly, that your new partner is going to be the person that's going to be safe enough for you to unload that on and they'll help you through it. That's not a very nice thing to dump on your new partner. So I don't recommend you doing that. Second thing is that, well, second thing you don't want to do. Hi, Sophie. Nice to see you in my broadcast. Thanks for being with me. Is to go to the place where you think you can go back and repair your past relationship. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. But to fix a bad relationship that you were that you were thrown out of, energetically speaking, isn't necessarily the best thing to do, because what you're simply doing is retreading old pathways. And again, because you haven't yet resolved the emotional hurts and wounds from the past relationship, 
you tend to find yourself walking through it and trampling in your own hurt. That's not fun and it's not, it's not comfortable either. So those two things I don't recommend at all. The third not recommended path is to swear off dating. Because <laughs> there are people out there I know who've gone several years without being in a relationship because they haven't dealt with the wounds from the past one. They were hurt, upset, wounded by a past relationship, so they're going to be celibate for 10 years. I'm being facetious, but it's kind of that thing where they're shutting it out. And there are many women I've known, and I coach women primarily, so this is where I get this feedback from, is that basically they're swearing off men because men are no good, men are hopeless, men are horrible because they don't understand them. All this baggage that gets thrown up because of a past breakup. Now, there may be some truth in the, dis dis the misunderstanding between men and women, generally speaking, but the reality is if you've gone through a bad breakup, that's one person you broke up with and one person that hurt you and you're going to paint all the other people with the same brush. Not recommended. So that's three things to play with and there's more as well I'm sure will come up. But let me start speaking to what you ought to be doing. Recommended pathways. As you may have guessed, one of the things I talk about and one of the things you would do is to deal with that emotional wounding that you're still carrying wrong from the past breakup. Now, I said I'm a relationship expert and coach. A lot of the work I do is helping my clients heal those past wounds. So I know a lot about this area. And I've been through a few myself. So I've got my own personal experiences I've been through as well. And having a background in, that I've been through with my coaching and, and also with my education, I understand this field rather well. And so if you don't face the emotional wounds, if you don't face your emotional upsets, if you don't admit that you have something wrong, it ain't going to change. And again, what I talked about earlier, you may, go, may like to suppress it, pretend nothing's, everything's okay and go out and date again. Not recommended. So what do you have to do? The emotional wounding that you're carrying inside has to be addressed in a way that is emotionally met. And what I mean by that is that those emotional um, spikes, <laughs> those emotional upsets, those emotional baggage have to be faced. And you need, and it's not something you can go through and go. Well, I think I'll be fine. I'm gonna. I, it's not. It, I made a mistake. It's all wrong. I'm gonna move on. That's the mental trying to fix the emotion. Doesn't work that way. Emotional healing is basically dealing with the emotional wounds inside, which can tie to resentment and guilt and other things too. And it's a lot of forgiveness work too. Thank you, Sophie. I appreciate the love. Um, oh, by the way, this is a Facebook live I'm doing first. If you're watching it on YouTube, that's where it was. So I'm talking to somebody you can't see. <laughs> you have to be on the Facebook live to see the interaction. So. In this journey of healing, part of the journey is, yes, you may want to look at what didn't work and what you did wrong in quotes, because everything's a possibility for education. A relationship breakup can be an educational experience, same as can be fired from a job can be an educational experience. I know I've been through both. Not dealing with them is basically like ignoring the books you have to read at school. Actually, that's not, you know, that's, there's too much, okay. <laughs> Using academia as an analogy isn't a pretty way of doing it, so let me pull that one away. Um, <laughs> sometimes analogies you to talk about, sometimes they fit, and sometimes they go, mm, not so much. So you need to be willing to face your own wounds. The other part is, and this is the other part that a lot of people do, is they go into a place of um, self-recrimination and self-judgment that somehow they did something wrong to cause their breakup. Now, whether or not you did something wrong to cause the breakup, Carrying around judgment and blame and self-recrimination against yourself isn't a healthy choice. If you did do something that didn't help the relationship, that caused the rift, that caused the separation, that caused the breakup, then learn from it. Face the emotions first, then deal with the behaviors and the choices you made so you can change it in the future. Now, I'm being very simplistic there. It's a lot more than just that two-second statement. But you've got to be willing to face those wounds and to heal them. Part of that journey is also because for most people, after a bad breakup, the last thing they feel is love. For most people going through the bad breakup, they're feeling recrimination, they're feeling judgment, they're feeling blame, they're feeling guilt, they're feeling resentment, they're feeling all these other things which are all pulling them away from loving themselves. When you've been broken up with, for most people I know, and especially for the women I deal with a lot in their work, they're torn apart, they're feeling so wounded and so hurt that they don't feel love is even available to them. And so that's again the reason why I don't recommend going and dating again because you're looking for love to try and cover up a thing that doesn't work. This is the trap of looking for love in all the wrong places that I've talked about many times before. Loving yourself in the midst of that pain is part of the healing journey. 
when you come back to loving yourself, when you come back to honoring who you are. That's part of the rebuilding back to full to full wholeness again after the breakup. Feeling wounded is normal. Feeling hurt is normal. Feeling like you've done something wrong can feel normal can be normal too because of the experience of breakups. We go we all go through them. But to face that with courage, to face that with humility, and to face that with the ability to love yourself at the same time are ways to get into the pain and heal it. There's um, a quote from one of my past educational parts I went on, talks about how healing is the application of loving to the parts inside that hurt. I'll say that one again because it's a powerful teaching. Healing is the application of loving to the parts inside that hurt. Part of the healing journey, in fact, a lot of the healing journey, is to start loving yourself back to health. It's like when you, if you're an adult with a kid who skinned their knee, you sort of you you sort of kiss it better, sort of thing. In a way, it's kind of that idea. Not quite as simple as that, but it's that idea when actually applying loving to those wounds inside. Self-forgiveness, which is part of the healing for judgment, for guilt, and for resentment, only works, can only work when there's loving present. Self-forgiveness is not a mental exercise. Self-forgiveness is a feeling tone experience to accept and appreciate who you are, independent of what happened. Self-forgiveness is one of the tools, by the way, of getting yourself back to wholeness again after a bad breakup, because nine times out of 10, or whatever statistic it is, after a breakup, you may be carrying some self-judgment and judgment of your partner. That's quite natural. And not, not recommending it to be right, but it's natural and normal for that to happen. So my invitation to you is to, if you are in a post-relationship, is to face your own upset, to face your own hurt feelings, to face your own wounds, and apply loving to them. Now, I, I recommend working with somebody who has the skills to help you facilitate the healing, the forgiveness, and the re restoration back to your fullness. I'll tell you, we can find out more about that in a moment. But at least start by having compassion for yourself. A friend of mine was posting on her wall earlier, which she said this, and she just went through the end of a really amazing relationship. She didn't say it was a bad breakup though, which is one thing that's different. I suspect her choice, her relationship was one that was much more elevated. But even so, that separation could still be painful. And so what she said in her post is that she really learned to love herself more. And I was applauding her for that because that choice, that willingness to love yourself through it is the healthiest, health, <coughs> the healthiest choice you can make. So self-love that I talk about, and I, got, I have a self-love meditation, I'll put a link in the comments, I'll tell you about that in a moment, is a, is a means to come back to yourself because we've been trained by our culture to keep looking out there for love. And that is an absolute lie <laughs> to look out there for love to fill us up because the other part again you go through a breakup you want to feel love again you go looking out there for love which I mentioned is a bad choice to make that isn't going to work because what you're doing is putting the responsibility on somebody else to make you feel okay and that's the epitome of codependency as I've talked about many times before so learning to love yourself fully embracing loving who you are is one of the vehicles to get you out of the pain and suffering hi Della I see my broadcast too thanks for being here Loving yourself through the journey, through the pain, through the healing is going to make it much easier. It's almost like putting a lubrication in an engine so it turns easier. That's an interesting analogy, but it works. So my invitation to you is if you have recently gone through a breakup or if you're going through the review of a breakup that happened a while ago, is how can you love yourself at the same time? My invitation to you is to apply loving to the parts inside that hurt. As I mentioned, healing is the application of loving to the parts inside that hurt. That was something I learned from my master's program. So. Putting yourself first after the breakup, giving yourself a break from the pain and maybe the judgment you're carrying against yourself because like, oh, how did I do that to them? How did they do it to me? And I, I did something wrong, all these different things we run in our heads. Be willing to let those go. Be willing to honor and respect yourself so you can get free enough to start loving again. Self-love is an anchor in my work because when you love yourself fully, first of all, you start to heal those wounds. And secondly, you start to become self-sufficient. So you don't need somebody to love you to make you feel whole. So that post-breakup experience, it can be tempting to go find somebody else to love, to make yourself feel whole, to make yourself feel restored. But it's a panacea. It's a, it's a band-aid for what needs to happen. You, I don't want to use the word must, you are invited to, <laughs> softening it a little bit, 
Thank you. Thank you, Della. Yes, it is, it is healthy advice. It is what I coach and teach and speak about so many times because people forget or don't know yet. So this is my reminder. So as I was going to say, my, my invitation to you, my recommendation to you is to really focus on how you can love yourself more because the loving is that facilitator of healing. Loving is the, I keep saying the lubricant because the, oil, the, engine, the engine oil, but it's the lubricant to allow the pain to be softened, to heal, to release, to become free again. In my coaching, a lot of the work I do is holding space for my clients and loving them through the phone so they can feel more of that themselves too. But it's really that environment that they build for themselves that helps them heal. Being self-sufficient and loving yourself is a paradigm that a lot of people don't understand yet because codependency is still the norm of our society. And I'm not going to go down that path. That's a whole other conversation I'm getting into and talk about for months. <laughs> and I have talked about it for the last three years. Codependency is a trap we fall into, so don't fall in that trap. Love yourself first. Become self-supportive. Own your own journey and become whole once again so you can love fully, if you choose to, in the future. Because relationship is a choice, not a have to, by the way. Okay, I've dropped about 15 different truth bombs here. I hope these have made sense to you. So again, two things I'm going to put in the comments because I recommended them and I, and I am adamant, that's a good word, I'm adamant about these, is loving yourself first and getting the help you need. So I'm going to put two things in the comments that I invite you, recommend that you check out and take a look at. One is my self-love practice. It's a guided meditation that will help you. I was just considering today, it takes care of four of the five love languages. I just realized I was looking at love languages today and realized my self-love practice actually includes four of the aspects of that. So there. Unplanned, but it works that way. So that's, that's barryselby.com forward slash self-love. I'll put a link in the comments, self-love or one word. Also, for the ladies, if you want to get some clarity, some guidance, some next steps, book a chat with me. As a gift from me to you, you go to barryselby.com forward slash chat. Again, both links will be in the comments and sign up for a conversation with me so we can actually get you started on the right path towards healing, wholeness, and next steps for an amazing relationship. This is my passion to serve, to inspire, to awaken, as you may have guessed, after 842 broadcasts. And I'll tell you when you find the links in a moment as well. I invite you to take care of yourself. Because if you've been through the pain and wounding of past relationships, maybe five years ago, maybe 10 years ago, maybe you haven't yet looked at how you can heal. It's never too late to start the process now. So love yourself first, own the journey, heal those past wounds, and be free to love once again. That's my distillation of my teaching today. Again, links will be in the comments for my self-love practice and for reaching out for a chat with me. And where you can find the replays, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live, just so you know. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Please come and watch day, day, anytime you want. Um, questions, comments, thoughts, please put them below and respond when I sign off. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is barrysoby.author. Please like my page and look at those there. But more easily, it seems to be the way it works, but on YouTube, I have a YouTube channel called Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist on there, playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where they all live. And I know they're all there, you can find them. Facebook's been, been a bit of a, a naughty boy <laughs> and has been hiding some of my broadcasts. So it may not show all the broadcasts. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but I can guarantee you on, Facebook, on YouTube, you can find all of them. So again, YouTube channel you've got, Facebook page you've got, my personal page you can find me there. Links will be in the comments for self-love and for chatting with me. And take this to heart. Loving yourself is the anchor, the key, the doorway to get to the love you really want. Start with the loving yourself and everything else comes afterwards. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me. I'll be back in tomorrow, same time, same channel, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Look forward to seeing you then. Take care of yourselves. Bye.